Welcome to the Blade of Tech channel's 87th edition and second year of the Space of Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of January 31st through February 6th in space exploration, science, and technology. January 31st, 1961. NASA launched on this date a four-year-old male chimpanzee named Ham on a Mercury Redstone 2 rocket from the Launch Complex 5 of the Atlantic Missile Range at Cape Canaveral into low Earth space to test the capabilities of the Mercury capsule. During his 17-minute suborbital flight, Ham experienced about seven minutes of weightlessness, reached an altitude of 108 miles, and a speed of 13,000 miles per hour. He was wired to medical sensors to monitor his vital signs. During the mission, the chimpanzee performed some simple tasks such as pulling levers when a light came on for reward of banana pellets. Ham was recovered safely 1,425 miles downrange by the dock landing ship USS Donner. The purpose of the Mercury Redstone 2 flight was to test a live passenger before risking the lives of human beings. Now, after Ham's successful flight, NASA was ready to launch the first Mercury astronaut, Alan Shepard, into suborbital flight. That mission took place Three months later. February 1st, 1928. Robert S. Snow Peltery and banker Andre Hirsch established an International Astronautics Prize of 5,000 francs to be awarded annually for the best scientific, theoretical, or experimental work in rocketry and space travel on this date. Unfortunately, the prize was discontinued after its value was wiped out in the financial crisis of the early 1930s. Esno Peltry is perhaps best known as the father of the French space program and was a key mentor to French rocket pioneer Jean-Jacques Barry. It would be 60 years before the IAP was joined by another prize for extraordinary work in space exploration. The Ansari X Prize was established in 1996 to challenge the nascent commercial space industry to develop and launch a manned spacecraft into space. The first prize was $10 million. It was won in 2004 by Paul Allen, Scale Composites, and Burt Rutan, and their Spaceship One craft. The pilot was retired Navy Commander Brian Benny, who guided the craft to 70 miles in altitude, breaking the old winged aircraft record set by the X-15 in 1963. Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic used much of the technology developed for the Spaceship One in their Spaceship Two design. February 2, 1931, Austrian engineer Frederick Schmeidel launched his V-7 post rocket on this date with 102 letters aboard from Schakel to St. Radegund, a distance of about a mile and a quarter. The 29-foot rocket descended as planned by parachute. It was the first ever delivery of mail with a rocket. This stunt succeeded in generating sufficient public interest, so he followed up with another successful launch in September of 1931 with his G-1 rocket with 333 letters on board from Hoke Troch to Semriak, a distance of about three and three quarters miles. Thus encouraged, Schmeidel sketched out ambitious plans for rocket transport and launched his two-stage S-1 male rocket from St. Martin to Graz in March of 1933, a distance of about 100 miles. He dreamed of using enormous rockets to transport long-range mail from Vienna to Budapest and from Graz to Budapest, or to deliver mail to remote oases in North Africa. But with the S-1 launch, the Austrian post office had enough of Schmeidel and his rockets. They obtained a law prohibiting further rocket mail activities in 1934, followed by a general government ban on private rocket development in 1935. After the Anschluss, where Germany annexed Austria in 1938, he destroyed his rocket work, not wanting it to be used for military purposes. He survived World War II, and he refused an offer after the war to go to the United States and conduct further rocket research. Instead, he refocused his energies into marine engineering. Schmeidel lived another 49 years, dying in Graz, Austria in 1994 at age 92. He bequeathed his estate to the city. He used the funds to establish a foundation to encourage new ideas for communications in the Graz region. Enjoying our content? We issue new videos every week, so be sure to subscribe so you stay current. Subscribing is free. 
And we encourage you to browse our 350 plus video library where you can find more milestone installments for every day of the year, as well as tech documentary segments, current events in space exploration, science and technology, gameplay recordings, reviews of tools and equipment, and reviews of small electronics and appliances. Each video is tagged with an alphanumeric identifier in the title, so searches for particular segments are quick and easy. February 3, 1995, U.S. Air Force Colonel Eileen Collins becomes the first woman to pilot the space shuttle in mission STS-63. The discovery was slated to rendezvous with the Russian space station Mir in preparation of a docking mission in STS-71. Collins was, in fact, the first female U.S. pilot of any spacecraft and only the second woman to pilot a craft after Soviet cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova did so in 1969. Space Station Mir was deorbited after 15 years of service in 2001, the ISS now being the primary Russian space station in conjunction with the U.S. Collins' last trip to space was as the commander of Shuttle Discovery, STS-114, in July of 2005. Collins retired a year later to serve on the board of the USAA Insurance Company. The entire shuttle fleet was retired in 2011. February 4, 2002, and a really scary incident, the International Space Station lost attitude control on its date and tumbled aimlessly for five hours. After the Russian service module computers developed communication problems and failed to transfer data to the U.S. gyros on the main solar array, the attitude control computer on the U.S. side stopped stabilizing the station. The computer problems also prevented the solar array from handing over control to the backup thruster system on the service module. At 1318 UTC, the station tumbled, in danger of losing electrical power, and experiments were shut down as systems were put into emergency mode. The crew were able to manually point the U.S. solar arrays, preventing any loss of power. The station was restored to operation later in the day, with attitude control resuming at 1843 UTC on thrusters and 1920 UTC on gyros. Improvements were later put into place to prevent a recurrence of that type of failure. Have you agreed with our choices, or do you think there are other events in space and tech history that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. If you have suggestions for other space and tech milestones, let us know. We'll credit milestones we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. And don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. February 5, 1952, the now globally ubiquitous electronic, vertically oriented Don't Walk sign was first installed at an intersection in New York City on this date. The impetus behind the installation was the growing number of deaths in the city resulting from pedestrian accidents. The New York City sign was not the first ever pedestrian signal. According to the U.S. Federal Highway Administration, the first such sign was likely installed sometime in the early to mid-1930s. Those signs didn't say, Walk, Don't Walk. Rather, such devices use the words walk and wait, or a combination of colored lights not dissimilar from traffic lights. The first definitive example of a signal that used walk, don't walk, was a neon sign installed in Washington, D.C. on January 1, 1939. February 6, 1971, Apollo 14 astronaut Alan Shepard hits the first golf ball on the moon on this date. He used a six iron attached to a sample collection tool. Despite thick gloves and a stiff spacesuit, which forced him to swing the club with one hand, Shepard struck two golf balls, driving the second, as he jokingly put it, miles and miles and miles. The Apollo 14 mission was Shepard's second and last space mission. His first was as pilot for the Freedom 7 Mercury spacecraft in 1961 which reached a suborbital apex of 160 miles altitude. President Nixon promoted him to Rear Admiral after the lunar mission, and he retired three years later, two years after the end of the Apollo program. Shepard died in 1998 at age 75. On December 2, 2021, NASA awarded three contracts for more than $400 million 
to continue development of commercial space stations that would eventually succeed the International Space Station, referred to as the Commercial Low Earth Orbit Destinations, or CLD program, NASA is hoping to replicate its success in manned spaceflight under the Commercial Crew Program, but for orbital space stations. The awards require the winners to finalize operational ready designs by 2025. The largest award at $160 million went to a team led by NanoRax and includes Voyager Space and Lockheed Martin. Those companies announced a space station concept called StarLab on October 21st that could be ready as soon as 2027. The second largest award, valued at $130 million, went to a team led by Blue Origin for the Orbital Reef Space Station, announced on October 25th. That project includes Boeing, Redwire, and Sierra Space, among others, with a goal of entering initial operations in the latter half of the 2020s. And the final award, worth $126 million, went to a team led by Northrop Grumman. Northrop is proposing a station that would use the company's Cygnus cargo spacecraft and a variant of the Habitation and Logistics Outpost module it is building for NASA's Lunar Gateway. We hope you enjoyed this 87th episode of Blade of Tech Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Once again, don't forget to subscribe or just stay in touch by following us on our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, the community feed for this channel, our Instagram feed, and our Minds page. We announce all new videos and post some unique content on those outlets. And if you prefer an alternative video distribution source, consider visiting our channel on Rumble. Thanks for watching.